Hello everyone, it's Miss Angela from the Fort Worth Public Library. Welcome back to another Fort Worth Nature Center Discovery Club story time. Today we are talking about food webs, and I have really been looking forward to sharing this song with you because it is one of my favorites. It's called Octopus, but I call it Slippery Fish, and it's by Charlotte Diamond. I asked her if I could share this song, and she said yes. Thank you, Miss Diamond. Okay, put your hands together. This is our slippery fish. Slippery fish, slippery fish, sliding through the water. Slippery fish, slippery fish, gulp, gulp, gulp. Oh no, it's been eaten by... Okay, now we're going to make an octopus with our hands. How many legs does an octopus have? Eight, that's right. So we need four from this hand and four from this hand. Ready? Oh no, it's been eaten by an octopus, an octopus, squiggling in the water. An octopus, an octopus, gulp, gulp, gulp. Oh no, it's been eaten by... Okay, this fish is a little bigger than our slippery fish. So it's gonna be a little bit of a bigger fish. A tuna fish, a tuna fish, flashing through the water. A tuna fish, a tuna fish, gulp, gulp, gulp. Oh no, it's been eaten by... Okay, now we're gonna put our hands on top of our head. What are we? A great white shark, a great white shark, Lurking in the water, a great white shark, a great white shark, gulp, gulp, gulp. Oh no, it's been eaten by... Okay, now we're going to get as big as we can. What do you think we are? A humongous whale, humongous whale, spouting in the water. Humongous whale, humongous whale, gulp, gulp. Gulp. Great job, everyone. Our story today is an adaptation of a book called Pond Circle by Betsy Franco. Now, I've changed a few things, but you should definitely check out this book because it is great. I'm going to act it out with some puppets. Have you ever tried using stuffed animals to act out a story? Grown-ups acting out stories with toys or stuffed animals is a great way to build narrative skills. You could even act out slippery fish if you have some ocean-themed toys. Here we go. This is the water, the deep still water that filled the pond by Angela's house. This is the algae, the jay green algae that grew in the water that filled the pond by Angela's house. This is the nymph, the mayfly nymph that nibbled the algae that grew in the water that filled the pond by Angela's house. This is the beetle the diving beetle that ate the nymph that nibbled the algae that grew in the water that filled the pond by Angela's house. This is the frog. Ribbit. The loud bullfrog that gobbled the beetle that ate the nymph that nibbled the algae that grew in the water that filled the pond by Angela's house. This is the snake. The slithering snake that swallowed the frog, that gobbled the beetle, that ate the nymph, that nibbled the algae, that grew in the water, that filled the pond by Angela's house. This is the skunk. The shy striped skunk that caught the snake, that swallowed the frog, that gobbled the beetle, that ate the nymph, that nibbled the algae, that grew in the water, that filled the pond by Angela's house. This is the owl. Whoo! The great horned owl that dived for the skunk, that caught the snake, that swallowed the frog, that gobbled the beetle, that ate the nymph, that nibbled the algae, that grew in the water, that filled the pond by Angela's house. This is the raccoon, the hungry raccoon, that stole the eggs of the great horned owl, that dived for the skunk, that caught the snake, that swallowed the frog, that gobbled the beetle, that ate the nymph, that nibbled the algae, that grew in the water, that filled the pond by Angela's house. This is the, this is the coyote. Ooh, 
out in the dark that stalked the raccoon, the hungry raccoon, that stole the eggs of the great horned owl, that dived for the skunk, that caught the snake, that swallowed the frog, that gobbled the beetle, that ate the nymph, that nibbled the algae, that grew in the water, that filled the pond by Angela's house. I am the girl whose name is Angela, who heard the coyote one summer night. By the deep still water where algae grows, mayflies dart, beetles dive, Frogs spring, snakes swim, skunks shuffle, owls swoop, raccoons rummage, and coyotes howl. And I howled back, Ow! The end. Thanks for joining us, everyone. It's time to pass it over to Mr. Michael at the Nature Center to talk more about food webs. See you next time. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Discovery Club for the month of May. Uh, our theme for the month of May is going to be involving our discussions on food webs. Uh, we're going to talk a little uh, in the next session, or I'm uh, sorry, our next lesson, we'll talk about predator prey relationships. So that's what we have uh, scheduled for the month of May, talking about how animals interact with each other. It's kind of our theme for the month. So welcome aboard for that. I want to thank Miss Angela at the Fort Worth Public Library for uh, sharing her story. And we're going to talk a little bit about. Uh, components to her story when we do a food web because that's what our theme is for today it is food webs so I have some uh, cups here with some animals and different aspects of a food web and we're gonna make our own little food webs okay and uh, this is an exercise that you can kind of further along at home uh, with little yogurt cups or little small cups and you'll see here in a minute uh, for the parents uh, how you can do this at home so let's talk about what a food web is why they're so important the different parts of a, what makes a food web a food web, and then we'll do a demonstration, a couple of demonstrations. We'll talk about the prairie, and then we'll talk about the aquatic uh, system. If we have time, we'll talk about forest, but uh, I think we're going to have enough time talking about these two different habitats. And these are two habitats we have here uh, at the Fort Worth Nature Center and Refuge. So let's talk about what a food web is. And food webs are so important. A food web is basically a connection and interaction uh, between all different levels of animals and all different levels of uh, uh, plants uh, and fungi and all sorts of things. We're going to talk about uh, more in depth here in a second. So a food web is just how animals interact with each other through the, the consumption hunting of, of each other. Okay, I know that sounds kind of, but it's important and let me tell you why. So let's talk about the different habitats we have here at the Nature Center. We have aquatic systems, we have forest systems, we have prairie systems. So animals and plants, they interact with each other in all those different habitats. So uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. So why are they so important? Well, let's, let me ask you this. Say for example, uh, you and your family, you're in your kitchen and you're making dinner. All right, you're making dinner. And who are you making dinner for? Well, usually just y'all, right? Your mom, your dad, your brothers, sisters, and so forth. And your you ha your kitchen is a certain size. You know. So, you're making dinner in your kitchen, and then some family members, your aunts and uncles, come over. Hey, how's it going? Oh, yeah, we'll stay for dinner. You're like, okay, we have space. <coughs> may need to um, make some more food because we're running out. We made enough just for us. And then your neighbors come over. Okay, now it's starting to get a little crowded. Now we're having a party. <laughs> Forget dinner. Now we're having a party. <laughs> and now you don't have enough food. And more friends come over. Now you're really tight. Okay, and you don't have enough food. Some of you are going to get full and be satisfied. Others won't. Okay, and the ones that are going to be satisfied are the ones who are going to be quick and go get that food. All right, if you're going to sit back and wait and be polite, you're not going to get any food. So you have to get up there to that table and you got to get some food. So what's happened is you're losing space, things are getting cramped, and you don't have enough food to survive or to make you satisfied, if you will. Well, that's kind of how I want to describe food webs. Food webs, there's plenty of food out there, but if you have too much, too many animals in one little small space, all the food is going to be consumed and there's not enough food for everybody. So food webs are important because it allows animals, as they feed on each other at different levels, <coughs> to, uh, 
it allows them to keep a nice balance because if you have too many animals in a certain area that's not good because again there are no more resources left no more food and space if you don't have enough then there's not enough animals to eat certain things like say for example in a river you have fish that like to eat these little algaes or and so forth well if you don't have enough of those algae grows and grows takes in all the oxygen from the water and then there's no oxygen in the water you can't breathe so then fish die off so you got to have a nice balance and that's where food webs come into play because they kind of animals again feed on, on each other so that's why food webs are important now what are the components to a food web what must you have to have a food web <coughs> well first of all they're not it's not a food chain chains are kind of linked together and usually a chain is from point a to point b the food webs a web like a spider web they go in all different directions a spider web a spider spins that web and goes in all different directions makes these really intricate designs well that's what a food web is uh our our, our animals how they interact they're interacting uh like a web they're going all different directions because uh coyotes they don't just eat small um say small mice no they go for rabbits and they go for all sorts of animals okay so they're, they're not just going to be linked together ding, ding, ding. they're going to go all different directions like a web so um, that's what a food web is okay that's the importance of a food web so let's talk about the components so in order for a food web to to uh to do well to be successful you must have well i'll let you think about it <coughs> somewhere around here is something that helps a food web go kind of hard to see it today because it's a little cloudy yeah i'm talking about the sun exactly the sun in the sky the sky uh, that has the sun out there bright and brilliant and radiating on us uh, provides energy light a source of uh, so much uh, so much energy is provided so that things can grow and so animals can utilize that sun so in order for a food web to get going you gotta have something moving it no i'm not dancing i, I promise i'm dancing. i can't dance i'm just getting this getting this food web going okay like a bicycle getting those those pedals going so that's what gets everything going so the other thing about a food web you must have well food to start off with right so you have producers and consumers okay producers are the things that produce the food think about a grocery store you walk into a grocery store you see and then you go down the produce aisle that has a lot of the uh, uh, fruits and vegetables and so forth so that's the food the the, the store is kind of like your produce it's producing food it's making available to you and what are you well if you walk into a restaurant or you walk into a grocery store and you partake in the food or you take that food home then you are a consumer you are consuming the food uh, that's why we call them con uh, people who shop they're consumers okay so the Sun gets the near energy going plants grow and produce food and then consumers come in and uh, eat the the plants now there are different levels of consumers you have primary primary being most important or the first primary consumers so like your insects and things like that then you have secondary producers that come or i'm sorry secondary consumers that come and eat the uh, uh the insects and things that are eating the grass and seeds and then you have you know third level um, tertiary throw a big term so we have secondary and then tertiary which is the third level they come and consume uh, the rabbits and so forth so you have different levels all right so a food web is a, a connection and interaction of wild animals together finding food with lots of space like in a prairie or a river or a forest using the energy from the sun to produce food so that consumers at different levels can uh, find food so that's what a food web is and those are the components to a food web so we talked about all those things now let's put it all together let's put it all ooh. oh i thought i saw a caterpillar which is part of the food web well not my food web but some animals i hear some birds calling and birds they love those caterpillars so that's part of the food web so let's do an example so i'm gonna uh pull the screen down a little bit there i'm gone okay i'm gonna show you my table <laughs> my table and we're gonna talk about a little food we're gonna make a food web and 
food webs, whenever animals, the consumers are eating uh, the, the producers, they collect all that energy in their body to help them survive. And the more they eat, the more energy they get and kind of builds up. So let's, let's go through our prairie system. All right, so I'm sorry, my aquatics. This is, these are my aquatic uh, components, okay? Since you, you talked about that story earlier. So in order to get a, a food web going, what must we have first? Hmm. Yeah, must have the sun. The sun, the bright sun. The sun is creating all that energy so that things grow. So what would be a producer uh, for some of these things I've, I have here? Yeah. So you, the sun creates light so that aquatic plants and algae grow. And that the aquatic plants and algae are very, very important because animals eat that. Such as turtles. They'll come in there and, uh, well, I'm sorry, that's not my order. But the minnows, the small minnows will come and get in that algae and they'll eat the little aquatic plants and things that are inside of those, like maybe some small microorganisms and so forth. And then the bigger fish come in and eat the minnows and they get all that energy from the, the plants as well as they get that from the uh, the minnows. So the sunfish comes in. Well, what will you eat a sunfish? Turtles will come in there and eat the smaller fish, the sunfish maybe, uh, especially like a, a snapping turtle. I have here a red ear slider because this is one of the common turtles we have here at the nature center and so you have them also you can have snakes snakes like water snakes will come and eat the the uh, sunfish and other fish and then of course turtles can eat the, the the snakes as well so see how it's building up building up building up well then what's going to eat the turtle well two things really you may have the egret okay the egret will come and eat turtles, uh, maybe not really big ones, but I've seen egrets eating uh, smaller turtles, that's for sure. And then alligators, the top predator in the river, will come and eat the egret. So you can see here in a river system how all these animals are connected. And this is just a small example. There's more. Let's talk about the prairie. I have a bunch over here. We have time to go through all these cups. Man, I'm putting them in out of, out of order, so I don't know. You know playing a game you know oh now i'm knocking my my cups around okay so what do we say starts our our food web we must have the sun the sun all right so the sun comes in and helps plants grow you know you have plant seeds okay and then you also you know have grasses that come in because of the sun all right so you have grasses and you also have uh, plant seeds. Well, what's gonna eat that? Okay, well, grasshoppers may come and eat the grass right there. You may have mice come eat the plant seeds. You know, mice may even eat the grasshoppers, okay? So we'll do that. So now we got ma mice running around. Well, we don't, have ha we don't wanna have too many mice running around, so we need something to control the mice. So we have some animals here, okay. What can we use mm, to control the mice? Uh, mm, ooh, how about the rat snake? Yeah, the rat snake comes in and eats the mice. So the rat snake comes in, eats the mice. That's very, very important. Well, what's gonna eat the snake? Maybe high in the sky, a hawk is flying and sees a snake and says, mm -mm. I've seen one of those happen. Uh, where a hawk comes down and eats a snake uh, here at the nature center. And then over time, this hawk may pass away, okay? Fall to the ground and, and may pass away. Well, what's gonna happen? Well, a couple of things. Number one, a vulture will come down and eat the dead, the dead hawk, okay? And that's very important. Vultures are very important because they clean up things. And then over time, you may have some fungi and mushrooms coming in uh, and these are decomposers I didn't mention we have producers we have consumers and then we have decomposers that basically uh, fungi bacteria that help break down all the the dead or organic matter okay like animals dying away or a dead plant these come in 
and break things down and those nutrients go down into the soil as well and that's very important because it helps provide uh, more nutrients in that soil so you may have fungi mushrooms and maybe even some bacteria and it breaks everything down and those nutrients are very important uh, other animals may help with that earthworms as they're moving around and then grubs and then you can just start this uh, start this all over again you may throw in see you got all these grubs you may have like a, a skunk who comes in and eats all eats all of them and then you may have a very opportunistic and hungry coyote that comes and consume a skunk and so forth and then you can just start this process all over again. So as you can see, food webs, they're fun because they're all interconnected. And you can make all different scenarios. And I encourage you at home, uh, get some old yogurt cups, and wrap them up, or just go buy some of these uh, little cups. And you can just put pictures of all the different animals that may be in your food web. So that's a little bit about food webs. We talked about what it is, what gets it started, and the components of it, like the sun, and what, what do we have in a food web, we have producers, we have consumers and decomposers. We have different level consumers, like a primary consumer, like a, an insect or a, uh, and other bugs. Then you have secondary consumers, like uh, uh, rabbits and things like that. And then uh, tertiary or upper level ones, like coyotes and so forth, our big uh, megafauna. So, uh, and it's important because they help keep the balance of whatever habitat they're, whether they're a prairie or a river system. So food webs are very important and uh, very intricate. So I wanna thank you guys. Uh, that, that's gonna uh, wrap up our lesson on food webs. So thank you for joining me and uh, learning about food webs. Hope you continue this, uh, this, this lesson and your uh, fascination um, at home as well. Our next uh, Discovery Club will be in a couple of weeks and we're gonna talk a little more about this, but uh, more specific, talking about predator and prey relationships. So as this food web is taking effect, in a river or a forest or a prairie, these predator-prey relationships, as they're consuming each other, how do they adapt to it? So we're going to talk about that and how do they defend themselves and, and whatnot. So that's what we're going to be talking about in a couple weeks. So thank you again. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a wonderful day and weekend and uh, stay safe. And we'll see you in a couple weeks, guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye.